The HB Project and the HB Channel are supported by Hi-Fi Clubben. That sound kills good music. Fully unexpected, the Dutch distributor of Meridian offered me a week's loan of the Meridian Ultra DAC. Now, I was not planning to review the Ultra DAC since at almost 20,000 euros it's outside the scope of this channel. But it was the opportunity to hear MQA in its ultimate form. The first thing I had to do is to get the Ultra DAC up to steam. Especially the clock oscillators always need some time before they come fully stable. Then I had to see what connection to use. I of course would use Rune as the player and started by using the Sulus protocol to send the bits to the Ultra DAC directly over the network. That appeared to be limited to 24 bit 96 kHz and since I wanted to compare 192 kHz MQA files against 192 kHz non-MQA, I switched to the SOTM SMS200 network audio adapter. That was connected to the Ultra DAC using the AudioQuest Cinnamon USB cable while the audio outputs were connected to the Peter van Willenswijk modified AudioNote Soro SE amplifier that drove the AudioPhysics Scorpio loudspeakers using Kimber cable type 4PR. I have heard several DA converters in this price range but never in my set one in its current form. And I will not start a series of reviews covering it. So don't ask me whether the Ultra Deck is better than its competition for I don't know. I can only give you my observations on this DAC in this set. Having said that, I must admit that I was shocked by the performance of the Ultra DAC. The best way to describe it is to say that there was no DAC audible. This level of refinement was unknown to me, at least in my own set. I don't know if there were still artifacts. At this level you need more than a week to find out. But if they were, they must have been minor. Now, how do you describe the natural sound? Artifacts I couldn't find. Using the term resolution is completely missing the point. I am so glad I only have to describe the difference MQA will bring, for this was all while using normal music files. While setting up Rune for easy comparison between the MQA and the non-MQA files I started to realize that there is little to improve on such a perfect sound and foresaw a Catch-22 situation. As I described in MQA update late October 2016, I now own a number of albums in both normal PCN and MQA that stem from the same source. Eddie Nunning's Song for a Quiet Night and the Buena Vista Social Club. And I am almost 100% sure the Cone Concert by Keith Jarrett I have in MQA and PCM are made from the same master too. In total I now have over 130 MQA tracks. And when you know what to listen for, you don't always need a comparison. The conclusion after some sessions of about an hour is there still was further improvement. The sound even further opened up, although the amount varied between albums. The Kern concert by Keith Jarrett gave the biggest difference, projecting the transients of a very directly mic'd piano even more convincing than the normal 24 bit 96 kHz HD Trex version, while Buena Vista Social Club, although more open and relaxed in MQA, was less convincing than the Jarrett recording. You could say that when you could own a 20,000 euro DA converter the need for MQA is less prominent than when you own a say 2,000 euro DA converter. MQA offers three benefits. Lower bit rates for high res music, guaranteed file integrity when the MQA light lit and lower time smearing by correcting for both A to D and D to A conversion. Up till now I consider the latter to be the most important. 
I now think it's the most important for people that use affordable gear and less important for users of the best of the best DA converters. First, streaming high resolution becomes a reality due to MQA and according to many streaming services are the future. As I have mentioned in the MQA update video, higher sampling rates demand less steep reconstruction filters at higher frequencies and therefore cause less artifacts in the audio band. Second, affordable equipment does have far more time smearing artifacts than a converter like the UltraDAC. Thus, curing that time smearing is of more importance for the lower end of the serious hi-fi market than it is for the true high-end portion. However, for high-end products it will be easier to design MQA in while the relatively low extra cost won't be an obstacle. So why not go for the full Monty? The file integrity still remains the factor of importance to all. But please don't see it as my final verdict on MQA. Such big changes always take time to get to the bottom of, as I have seen with the introduction of CD. So subscribe to this channel or follow me on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. You can also post questions but please don't ask me for buying advice. View my About Questions video to find out why. I have posted more information below this video. If you like this video please consider supporting it through the Patreon channel and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.